The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. Well then, Buntain- Buntendo Entertainment System. Uh-huh. Cough, cough, cough. This is the beginning. Cough, cough, cough. Um, let's talk about books. You see, people always say, write what you know. And what I know is that I have been a loyal and not at all disgruntled employee at my local bookstore for well over 16 flipping years. <laughs> As such, I really do have my skeletal fingers on the pulse of the book world, and I am here to lightly caress your ear holes with my skeletal fingers with this week's installment of Notes from the Bookstore. And hey, Bunny, 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 guess what? What? We got our secret shop. Yeah? Yeah. Yes, we got a 79.3847%, which I'm proud to say isn't failing. Nice. So unlike Donald Trump's presidency or me in college in the late 90s, your local bookstore is not hideously failing like a drunk puppy on fire. A drunk puppy? Yeah, a drunk puppy. (laughs) He would be drunk on like Red Dog. On Red Dog, I just realized what a, what a puppy would be, what a dog would be drunk on. The dog would be drunk on Red Dog. Yes. Also, unlike Disney's Santa Paws series of movies, no puppies died during the making of this podcast. Yes. Unlike that you Dis- know of. Yeah. Unlike Disney's Santa Paws series, so yeah, Disney killed dogs. Look it up. Just yeah. Santa. Paws. Google that. But I digress. The point is, and I do have one. The point is that we passed our first secret shop. Did we pass with flying colors? No. In fact, H-E double hockey hell no, we did not pass. We we, we did not pass with flying colors, but uh, at least we passed. There are some other stores out there that did not do as good as we did. In fact, in fact, there's one other store actually got of 49% on their secret shop. First off, how was that even possible? (laughs) Were the books on fire? Was everyone drunk? I'm so confused. How do you get that low of a score? It's like Anchorman. How did you do that? (laughs) In fact, I'm not even mad. That's amazing. (laughs) You pooped in the refrigerator? And you ate the whole wheel of cheese? (laughs) Anyway, the store manager at that store that got a 49%, Yeah. Um, there's a lot of rumors about what has happened to that store manager. Uh-huh. Some say that store manager is getting fired. Some people say that that store manager is getting transferred quietly and secretly to another store like a naughty priest. <laughs> yes. You know, just keeping it under wraps. Some people say torture. Some people say that that store manager is going to be tortured. Um, I heard... That is a strict company. It's a very strict company. I heard uh, not just any torture. I heard that the store manager is being sent to a secret blacklist site in Jersey where, can't believe this, He's going to be forced to watch La La Land over and over again. And and with the torture, what makes me feel bad is I I had heard that this particular manager had sensitive nipples. Oh, God. Sensitive nipples. That's bad. Yeah. But, yeah, can you imagine the torture of watching La La Land over and over again? I mean, the beginning is great, but it goes downhill fast, especially when the white guy is telling the black guy he's doing jazz wrong. <laughs> and then he gets all prissy like oh man how dare that guy make me rich and famous how dare that guy make me so famous that I can afford to open my dream jazz club how dare he ruin my life like that yeah well the, the meow so, meow cats yeah yeah, yeah. but that's fun 
And don't worry, Maxwell, I'm not going to get your room messy. But anywho, the rumor about the fate of the 49% store is that it, it, the rumor that I believe to be true yeah. is that the suits up in corporate, I heard they hired a bounty hunter to encase him in carbonite and oh. deliver him to Jersey. <laughs> That's serious. The suits are serious. The suits don't play. That is pretty serious. Yeah. The suits don't play. Maxwell, if you're going to be playing with, like, the super crinkly thing, can you do it in another room? Because I'm trying to record a podcast. Just FYI. Just just thought I'd throw that out there. If you're going to continue crinkling that, can you go to a different room? Because that's very loud, and I'm trying to... Okay. You can do that outside if you want. Or did you already get all the flavor out of it? <laughs> Let me throw that away, then. And maybe wipe your face, because your face is super greasy right now. In fact, I heard through the grapevine that the suits in corporate are real happy with how the secret shops have been going down because the secret shops, they're, they're happening all over the place. And uh, Maxwell's hands are now so greasy that he can't turn the uh, doorknob. <laughs> Maxwell, you, you, grab those shorts and use the shorts to turn the knob. Okay, mommy, turn the knob for you. Remember, you're throwing something away that mommy just pushed against the door. Why are you Fuck the shit torturing out. me? I'm not. Okay. You just don't know how to control your urges. I don't know how to control my urges. You're that is. Be, I gotta go get her diaper. Oh, okay. She's gonna scream at y'all. Yeah, you know, she is. She's gonna scream be screaming in the middle of the. Fuck the shit out my house. Honey, I'm trying to keep notes from the bookstore clean we're in the middle of notes from the bookstore and oh. you come in here uh, old That's snoop you know. dogging it up the... no, it... oh, what? <laughs> next time you come in here singing rap lyrics yeah trying expletive deleted i'm just trying to keep this part clean of the show okay she's rocking out to it she, i know she's rocking out to it i'm just trying not to cause <laughs> in this one part here, Eleanor, you, I'll share my popcorn with you. That's how much I love him. So the suits, they're loving the secret shops. Okay. So the suits are ramping up secret shops. Number one, the secret shops are now going to be three times a month. The secret shops are also now going to account for a whopping 40% of our final grade, which is odd because we're not in school. Okay. And the suits are going a step further. Bunny. Yes. Secret robberies. Secret robberies. Yeah, they're to test stores and see how they'll do in a robbery. And let me tell you, I am super excited about this because I am experience. You have training. I do. I'm totally prepared for this. On the job training. I have, yeah, I have literal on the job training. Hands on. When it comes to. Robbery, so like, they, it's like, guys, we got this. I don't know if that's fair. I mean, you do have the upper hand in this situation. Ah! You do. Hey, can we you do. Do that, kid? Anyway, Bunny, mm -hmm. let's talk about books. Summer is almost here, so a lot of books are coming out right now. So I've got a list here of some of the some of the big ones. So let's let's talk about as many of these books as we can while we can, shall we? Sure. Bunny. Ivanka Trump. Has a new book that just came out. It's on our bestseller list right now. It's called I Worked Real Hard for This. No, seriously, why are you all laughing? <laughs> That's good. Happy about that. That's empowering for women who didn't work hard. So, do you, do you ever look at Ivanka Trump and start having a really hard time buying that she's American? Oh, that would be wonderful. That would be real wonderful. Where are you from? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that's 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 a solid question. Cuz she's got such a euro trash attitude and look going on. Yeah. Yeah. She looks very hoity-toity. Yeah. 
Richard Belzer has a new book out that was just oh. released. It's on our new release table right now. It's called, Hey, Wait, Why the Hell Am I Wearing These Sunglasses All the Time Anyway? So... <laughs> And that should be a that should be a good seller, informative, you know, get to the bottom of things. Yeah. Neil deGrasse Tyson has a new book out. Neil deGrasse Tyson, famed scientist, and I'm not sure if you know this, uh, Bunny. Neil deGrasse Tyson is the son of noted astronomer Mike Tyson. Yes. Is that is that is that true, Eleanor? I didn't think that was a I didn't think that was legal, but you know. Whatever floats your boat, I guess, Eleanor. Neil deGrasse Tyson has a brand new book out. Yes. It's a seller, and it's called Astrophysics for Insufferable Douche Waffles. <laughs> it's a science book that's specifically designed for jerks who love having loud conversations about topics that make them sound smart. <laughs> a really good seller right now especially in Oklahoma what? see I think see I love Neil deGrasse Tyson yeah but I think that if I was going to remake Ghostbusters with like an all black cast I would totally take him for the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man yeah no that's 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 good thinking can you open the door next time please so she can have an opportunity to wander out. So exciting about it, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yes. I, I keep thinking that it's Neil as in kneeling down to pray and deGrasse like the grass. <laughs> like, like grass is kneeling to pray to Mike Tyson. That's how uh. I think of his name. Neil deGrasse Tyson is how I, how I remember his name. It's weird, <laughs> but that's my brain. Christian book author, best-selling Christian book author, pastor, and plastic-faced victim of the Joker's nerve tonic, Joyce Meyer, yeah. is about to release her best book ever. We're all big fans of Joyce Meyer here on the Pope on Film Podcast. Yes, and we are. Book, and this is the book she was born to write, and I'm super excited to read her brand new book. It's called... A Christian Woman's Guide to How Much Botox is Too Much Botox. <laughs> and uh, it's going to be interesting because every page in the book is just a close-up picture of her face. Yes. Just a close-up picture of her face, and it says, this is too much. <laughs> every page of the book. Just to really drive it home, you know? And, and, and I, would, I would imagine... <laughs> picture of her face in a specific area and then the description of the procedure of when that happened and why that was or was not too much Botox. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a great book. Yes, Maxwell? Can you play with the what? The Star Wars gun with the bullets. Play with the Star Wars gun with the bullets? No, not right now because it's in my room and I can't get it right now. It, later. <laughs> Maybe. Is that right, Eleanor? You were responsible for that hideous act? Wow, I thought that it was ISIS. Jeez. What? You're the person who invented Napster? I'm shocked by that. Truly shocked, Eleanor. We're learning a lot about my 10-month-old daughter. So Deepak Chopra, the yes. legendary... The legendary self-help guru, whose name, coincidentally, is in fact Klingon, or Real Mellow Dude. <laughs> he has a new book out. It's a bit of a departure, though, for Deepak Chopra. His new book is called To Hell With This, Ex to Hell With This Existence Is Meaningless, Just Give Up Now. <laughs> let me tell you, that's the best book for 2017 so far. Yes. From what I can tell about uh, pop culture, politics, and existence in general, I think the best-selling book of 2017 is going to be Deepak Chopra's To Hell With This, Existence Is Meaningless, Just Give Up Now. I, that, <laughs> that's going to be good. So Do, now, now, when you're stacking the shelves, 
do those two books go together? Deepak Chopra and Joyce Myers? Oh, hell no. Joyce Myers is in our Christian section. Deepak Chopra is in what used to be our self-help section. Okay, so... We so, used to have just this... We used to have this really big section that was just called self-help. And then there was a section for uh, sexuality. And then there was a section for death. And then that was it. But then, um, a year or two ago, the section exploded into a million subcategories. So now we have... Uh, uh, we have uh, personal health, we have mindfulness, we have success, we have 20-somethings, we have guys named John who are feeling a bit pudgy. <laughs> we, we have our it's Tuesday and I'm just not feeling it section. <laughs> we have, is this the sniffles or do I have cancer section? We have just calming the hell down. That's a section. <laughs> we have the sitting in the Walmart parking lot listening to the radio because you just need a minute section. <laughs> it's really fractured into a million different subcategories, and it's really confusing and complicating. But, uh, yeah, uh, Deepak Chopra is hiding there somewhere. <laughs> what was that, Eleanor? Do you plan on doing what? Well, that's definitely not illegal. I'm pretty sure you'd get away with that. At least, at least in California. Yes, Maxwell. I have, I have a, a lab underground. You have an underground lab? <laughs> Maxwell, what? you need to keep your Labrador above ground. He will suffocate and die. You cannot have an underground lab. Maybe an underground poodle, but you can't have an underground lab, okay? Well, Just to be clear, you shouldn't keep dogs and, underground. And besides, we have to get back to the show because I am fascinated by this. I am well, fascinated by what I am hearing. See, I, I do not keep up with bookstore technologies. Yeah. That I was not aware that you had a full working categorization system for crackpots. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No. We absolutely do. That is amazing. We have a section for conspiracy. We have a conspiracy theory section now. <laughs> what? Is it labeled conspiracy theory? Yes. Yes, it is. And they still don't get it? <laughs> yeah. We used to have a section that was basically just New Age and then the New Age section, just like self-help, the New Age section fractured. So now we have a section for tarot cards. We have a section for Wicca. We have a section really? for We have a section for aliens. We have a section for ghosts. We have a section for um, uh, supernatural. Not the show, but for scary things, honey. I well, I remember, I remember back in the day when I was a kid, Whenever I would go into a bookstore, I always wanted to check out the occult section. And that was it. It was the occult section. And it was generally right around the religion section somewhere. Yeah. And then that broke into the New Age, and, and eventually the occult section went away as New Age uh, kind of took it over. And I just didn't yeah. want... It was so much cooler to be caught in the occult section... You know, because yeah. it made you look really metal, you know. But yeah, getting caught in the new age section, totally different look. Yeah, yeah. Now we have now we have a now we have different categories. Now we have a section just for hauntings, and we have a section just for conspiracy theories. We have a conspiracy theory section. That's where all the lizard people books are. <laughs> I mean, it's really different. You know, you're in high school, stuff like that. It's it's one thing to be to be caught standing there in a bookstore, thumbing through the Satanic Bible, just be like, "Oh hi, how you doing?" You know, because that story is going to yeah. get around and everybody's going to think you're cool. It's not yeah. the same when you're standing there just thumbing through Katie Knight. <laughs> you know. Yeah. 
Ramsa so, speaks again. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the Pulitzer Prize. Okay. There is an author. There is an author. His name is Anthony Doer, and he recently won the Pulitzer Prize for fiction for his novel entitled All the Light We Cannot See, which, if you're not aware, is a funny, lighthearted romp through hideous Nazi war atrocities. Because <laughs> what else is going to win the Pulitzer Prize? Like a, like, a, <sighs> like, a, like a fun book? Hell no. <laughs> Don't give Pulitzer Prizes to things that are fun that people actually want to read. What, this is a book about Nazi oh, war in, in Europe? Okay, here's your award. I've I've worked with Nazi war footage before, you know? Yeah. And it, it is seriously disturbing, disturbing shit. Sorry, stuff. Um, but I'm, I'm just I'm just picturing all the bodies. I'm sure you've seen the pictures of the bodies. And, like, you just kick one all over and it's like, there's Waldo. Yeah. You found Waldo. <laughs> yeah, some messed up stuff. <sighs> well So I'm glad I'm glad that the, the Pulitzer committee is, is on the job. Yeah. But here's the thing though. When awards are given to novels, the Hollywood machine is not far behind. So all the light we cannot see the movie is coming out this summer in IMAX 3D with a blockbuster cast and music by 21 Pilots. <laughs> and, the, and the director, Mr. James Cameron, has already announced that he's filming the sequels, All the Light We Cannot See, numbers two through five simultaneously. Yes. So that he can create All the Light We Cannot See, the Nazi war atrocities cinematic universe. <laughs> so, so already planning all the sequels number two is going to be in vietnam number three is going to be in world war three so number three is going to be set in the future number four is going to be in space and all the light we cannot see number five is basically just going to be kung fury <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget what disney's doing and hey. then you reboot yeah. yeah and then don't forget what disney is doing hey we can have our own Harry Potter uh, world. So come on over to Disney World in our new All the Light We Cannot See Nazi War Atrocity World. <laughs> it's going to be so much fun. It's going to be so much fun. Yeah. The kids are going to love it. And finally this week, let's talk about teen author Cassandra Clare. She is the very popular and highly successful author of a series of teen novels called the Mortal Instruments series. There's a ton of books. Okay. Sell a bunch of them. They got turned into a movie, and now there's a Mortal Instruments TV show that's somewhere hiding in cable. But it's a very popular series, extremely popular, and people buy it like crazy. Teen books, in case you don't know, are just like uh, adult books, except people actually read them and have fun with them. <laughs> That's what teen books are. And it, you know what? People people don't know why these books are so popular, why the Mortal Instruments series by Cassandra Clare, why this series is so popular. It just remains a mystery. Who knows why this series is so popular? Nobody does. It's a mystery. A mystery, I tells you, bunny, a mystery. <laughs> Anywho, the new Cassandra Clare book uh, is about to come out. It's entitled Totally Not Harry Potter Guys. Uh-huh. Totally Not Harry Potter, comma, you guys. <laughs> All the other books in the Mortal Instruments series, uh, this new book is about a teen girl who is not just a female Malfoy. Okay. And it's about the magical adventures that she has with characters who legally are in no way Harry, Ron, and Hermione, all right? <laughs> the Mortal Instruments series is in no way Harry Potter. I can't stress this enough. See, the Mortal Instruments series is about yeah. teenagers. Yeah. You, 
using magic and getting into epic adventures, okay? Harry Potter's a kid. Totally <laughs> legally different. All yes. right? Totally different. Still, no idea why this Mortal Instrument series is so popular. I guess just, we'll just never know why it's so popular. No. I guess we'll never know. It's just going to remain a mystery. And that is it for Notes from the Bookstore this week. I hope you enjoyed yourself. And remember, boys and girls and gender rebels, you too can save 10% on all of your purchases, and all you have to do is pay us a measly $60 <laughs> in this economy. And cut. That is Notes from the Bookstore this week, and I hope you all enjoyed it.